Hello, welcome to a new set of videos looking at monopolistic markets. We've got a suite of videos taking you through the economics of a market or an industry where some sellers, perhaps just one, enjoy some monopoly power or selling power in the market. So what is a monopolistic market? Well, basically in its purest form, it's when one single business, one firm dominates the entire market. It has 100% concentration or 100% market share. In that situation, the firm is the industry effectively. Uh, more realistically, uh, it's any market where there's uh, one firm has a significant market share. The UK Competition and Markets Authority, our main comp uh, competition regulator, they describe a working monopoly as any firm with more than 25% of industry sales. We can go a little further. There's something called a dominant firm in the market. And a dominant firm is one which accounts for a significant share of a given industry and has a much bigger market share than the next largest rival. And typically, we think of dominant firms that have a market share of 40% or more. A good example would be Coca-Cola. If we take the data for their share of the carbonated drinks market in the United States, Notice there I've defined the market quite precisely. Carbonated drinks in the United States. Uh, their market share in the in the United States. Well, look at the y-axis there. It's fallen and risen, but it's actually within a range of 41 to 40 percent. For many years, Coca-Cola has had a 40 percent plus share of the market. And therefore, it's a good example to add to your notes as a dominant firm. Here's the, here's the data for the share of the big big firms in the States from 2004 to 2019. And you can see that this market is dominated by Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Uh, back in 2004, they had effectively three quarters of the market. If you add the orange and blue bits together, that share has come down. Actually, it's now below 70%, in particular the rise of Dr. Pepper and, and other competing brands entering the market. So perhaps the market's becoming a little bit more contestable. Essentially, it's still, a, still a, a duopoly with a dominant firm. There's also another concept called a near pure monopoly. Now, a near pure monopoly is essentially one where a firm has a market share when they're way above 40 percent, perhaps closer to 90 percent. We're getting close to pure monopoly. And again, more realistically, it's when a seller has perhaps more than three quarters of a market. And again, crucially, it depends on how you actually define the market. Here's a good example. Uh, this is Google's market share in the United Kingdom from 2015 all the way through to uh, the autumn of 2020. And again, you can see on the y-axis, I've shortened the axis, their share has ranged from 83 to 89%. So Google clearly, by some distance, the most popular search engine in, in the UK. The second one is Bing, I think. Don't use it myself, but they had a market share of about 10% in the spring of 2020, just before lockdown. Uh, Yahoo is about a 2-3% market share uh, in this market. This is pretty close to a near pure monopoly. And what about one or two other examples of businesses that have significant market share, you know, tangible market power? Well, here's a, a good example. Let's take the global market for tablets. Okay, again. Crucially, monopoly power de depends quite a bit on how you define the market. So here, this great chart, love this chart, fantastic colors here. This is the tablet shipments around the world by vendor from 2011 through to the third quarter of 2020. It's bang up to date. And as of September 2020, if you look at the blue, the Apple iPad had, I think, 29% market share of the global tablet market. A good example of a working Monopoly, Samsung, pretty, pretty good. Uh, Huawei picking up, Amazon picking up, lots of others, but that's essentially a working monopoly. Or you could even make a case for saying a duopoly. Samsung and Apple have about half of all of the tablet shares in the world. Now here's a good example where you can have market power, but you don't necessarily have to have a monopoly market share. This is a comparison of leading car companies market share in the UK, again, in September 2020. So it's the percentage share of the market in the autumn of 2020. Ford's the biggest, they're the leading car brand in the UK. 
Um, I, think, I think in September they sold nearly 30,000 vehicles in just one month. Their market share is, is, is nudging towards 9%. Volkswagen second with just over 8%. But notice here that there are, there are lots of firms with a market share of, of above 5%. No one firm completely dominates the market. And ask a simple question, do these firms have significant market power and ability to set their own price? The answer is yes. Is there a dominant seller in the UK car market? No. Are each of them achieving economies of scale in production and sales? Yes. It's perfectly possible to have a market which is dominated by a clutch of big firms. No one firm is, is essentially a monopoly, but they all have price setting power in the market. So my advice is not to get too hung up on market share data. It's useful. It's interesting. Not always the case. Here's a good example of, a, uh, of a, another example of a market which is essentially an oligopoly rather than a monopoly. This chart shows the largest mortgage lenders in the UK. And actually the top 10, if you add them all together, that's about 80% of the market. And the top five, including Lloyds Bank, which is clearly the leading mortgage lender, they have about 60% of the market. So essentially this is an oligopoly. <clears throat> Again, no one firm has 25, 30, 45, 40% of the market. Each of these mortgage lenders can set their own prices. So you don't necessarily have to be a monopolist to have price setting power, but this is probably closer to being an oligopoly. So what are the key characteristics of a monopolistic market? Let me just run them through with you. First of all, in a monopoly, uh, we define market monopoly powers when firms have price setting power. They've moved from being a, pri a passive price taker in perfect competition to have price setting power. The barriers to entry in this market will be pretty high. That's one of the reasons why monopoly power is maintained over time. There are barriers to entry and also exit. The large producers can nearly always achieve economies of scale in production. That helps to bring down the average costs. Dominant firms, if you have really high market power, monopoly power, you actually might be able to operate independently of your rivals. But oftentimes that's not the case. And when we get into oligopoly theory and game theory, you do have to think interdependently. In a monopoly, consumers may well have a fairly limited choice of supplier or seller, particularly, by the way, if there's a local monopoly. You might think, for example, of a local petrol station or local convenience store, which essentially has local monopoly power. And again, in a monopoly, there tends to be relatively few close substitutes available, which makes the cross price elasticity of demand lower and can lead to a monopoly having a price inelastic demand curve. The extent of monopoly power does depend, it does depend on how we define the market. Okay, in the next video, we will take you through the mechanics, the analysis of how a monopoly maximizes its profit. Thank you.